Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV, and this video is all about determining if a non-Tesla EV can do without a Tesla supercharging network. As you probably have noticed over the last several months that I've been transitioning away from just talking about Teslas only to other EVs as well. This is not because I'm dissatisfied with Tesla. In fact, I love Tesla and I'm happy to own a Model S. However, the industry is getting to the point where we're building this critical mass and it makes it viable to choose an electric vehicle aside from Tesla. In videos where I talk about these other EVs hitting the market, I see consistently across these videos in the comments that they don't have a supercharging network or they should license out access to Tesla's supercharging network. But is that really necessary? This is what I wanna determine in this video. Even though most electric vehicle owners charge their cars at home while they sleep, one of the most common objections that I see from people is that cars like the Porsche Taycan, the Jaguar I-Pace, and the Audi e-tron don't have the Tesla supercharging network. This is largely understandable since a fast charging network takes an electric vehicle from just an around town commuter and adds the ability to use the vehicle for long road trips as well. As a Tesla owner, I have benefited significantly from Tesla's dense and reliable network of fast charging 100 to 120 kilowatt hour stations that allow me to go from coast to coast without worry. Now, before we jump into the meat of this video, let's go back in time to where this nationwide fast charging precedent all began with Tesla's September 2012 launch of the supercharging network. All right, thanks everyone for coming. Um, so what, what we want to uh, show you tonight is essentially the answer to the three major problems that are holding back electric vehicles, or at least that people think are holding back electric vehicles. Um, you know, one is this question of being able to drive long, long distances conveniently. And you, with, a, with a gasoline car, you can drive, in theory, anywhere, anywhere you want with, with high convenience. Well, how do you do that with, with an electric car? And that's what uh, the, the supercharger is going to enable. Uh, then another question is, what do we do about the fact that uh, uh, when electricity is generated, it is generated at a power plant? And so w what about this idea that uh, the uh, emissions are just pushed to the power plant? And we're going to show you how we address that. Um, and then the third is, well, what about the cost of electric vehicles? How do we? Uh, how do you compare the cost of electric vehicles with the cost of, uh, of, of gasoline vehicles? And we'll address all three of those things. So we're going to have these at highway rest stops all, where, all around the country um, and around the world. And that's combined with uh, the, the, the solar power deck that you see there. So that provides the solar power that uh, goes to the supercharger and then to the cars. So what we're able to do here with, with the supercharger is charge at about 100 kilowatts. Uh, and go, going forward, potentially as much as 100, 120 kilowatts. And what, what that means is you could, you could drive for three hours, stop for less than half an hour, and recharge and be ready to go again. So, yeah. So if, if, you, if you take the typical trip that someone experiences when they're, when they're driving, let's say you, you, you started out at 9 a.m., and you drove for three hours. Around noon, you'd want to stop for a bite to eat, uh, go to the restroom, uh, grab a coffee, and be on your way. And that actually takes about 20 to 30 minutes. And what you can do with the supercharger, you can just plug your car in, and by the time you're done with all that, you're ready to go again. This is not, so, like I said, this is not some you know, figment of imagination that maybe it'll happen some point in the future. This is, these are installed. We, we, we built these up in secret, um, and we're unveiling it for the first time tonight. So. <laughs> So um, by the end of this year, in a, in, a, in a few months, we'll actually have a bunch more installed in California and extending to uh, uh, Nevada and Oregon. And going beyond that, within two years, this is not an exaggeration, within two years, we will cover almost the entire United States uh, with superchargers. You'll be able to travel practically anywhere. And then our long-term goal 
uh, which, which is perhaps in the sort of four or five year time frame. So not t t Tesla long term. <laughs> um, four or five year time frame, we expect to cover the entire United States without exception and uh, the lower part of Canada. So I, th I think this I, I think this this day will actually go down um, as as being quite historic. I think it, at least on par with SpaceX docking with the space station earlier this year. I mean I really think this is important. Um, and 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 really uh, I want you to go out there and sort of and, and spread the word because people have this idea that if you have an electric car you you can't you, you're sort of you there's no freedom you're you're stuck you're, you're you know they have this. This, this idea that you can't go anywhere. And what we're showing here today is that, in fact, you have more freedom than with anything. You'll be able to go anywhere, and, and you can feel really good about uh, your, your travel because you're, you're going on sunlight. And, by the way, if you want to go from LA to New York, if you pack food and stay with friends, you can leave your wallet at home. Since Tesla launched the supercharger network over six and a half years ago, they have done an amazing job at launching more than 10,000 stalls worldwide in over 1,400 stations. In North America alone, we see more than 670 stations, all accessible from the in-car touchscreen. How does this stack up to the most commonly used non-Tesla EV charging standard, Combined Charging System, or CCS? Where it becomes incredibly confusing is how to determine which ones are, let's say, 100 kilowatt hour or faster charge rates. On Electrify America's network, which is included in that plug shares map, says they offer between 50 to 350 kilowatt rates on chargers near highways and 50 to 150 kilowatt rates in metropolitan areas. The next logical question that comes to my mind is if I wanted to do a coast to coast trip, for example, from Los Angeles to New York City, could I do that alone on the CCS network? So let's actually do that now. The first thing that I'm going to do is just to make sure that all other charging standards are removed besides CCS. And you'll see CCS slash SAE, that's the J1772 combo. All right, so we're gonna remove everything and just select the CCS standard. And you can see all the different networks, and we're gonna to go to create a new trip planner. Enter in Los Angeles. That's where we'll begin. And then let's do New York City as the end destination and see what comes up. Perfect, okay. So here's what we have. We have a pretty good route here, but this big gap in Utah and Colorado. So let's do this. We're going to select some additional charging standards to see if that gets us any better coverage. So there's the NEMA 1450. There's the J1772, which is slower charging, by the way. And we're going to zoom in here and just try and find out what that distance is in this gap that we're looking at. Could I make it on, for example, a Taycan? So we've got Richfield, Utah, and Grand Junction, Colorado. Let's jump over to Google Maps and see what exactly that distance is. Well, we can see here that it's about 224 miles. So depending on what type of EV you have, non-Tesla EV, it may not be enough to use some of the regular standard charging networks. And here we've got another one from it looks like Fort Morgan, Colorado to Ogadala, Nebraska. And if we enter that distance in, we see it's only 133 miles. So for, for this one, it does work, but for the distance between Utah and Colorado, it would be a little bit dicey on the formal charging network. And it looks like for most of the rest of the trip, it could be done with the existing network of chargers, CCS, and others. In summary, it is possible to get around with a non-Tesla 
EV using the CCS standard charging network. As long as you're in town or in cities where it does have a dense network of charging stations, where it does get a little bit inconvenient is when you want to go on an extremely long road trip. There could be some areas where in February of 2019, you may have some gaps. Now, the good news is that electricity is everywhere in the developed world. It just may not be as fast as the CCS charging standard, and it may not even be as fast as the level two, let's say, for example, J1772. You may be plugging into a one tin outlet, but maybe during those gaps or in those areas where you do have gaps of fast charging, you can find a hotel or something to plug into a 110 outlet. My advice to those considering buying a non-Tesla EV like the Porsche Taycan, the Jaguar I-Pace or the Audi e-tron is just to take a look at a website like PlugShare and see how dense that charging network is. More than likely, you're going to have a network that will get you probably 90 to 95% of your driving needs. And of course, for the instances where you do need to take a long road trip, if there's not a dense charging network that allows you to get from point A to point B, maybe you consider renting a petrol powered vehicle in those instances. Also keep in mind that this is February 2019 in another year, this charging network will grow and will become more dense and reliable. So keep that in mind as well. And I really appreciate you watching this video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you're a regular, hit the like button for me and you're welcome to share this out as well on Twitter or Reddit or anywhere else you think someone might find this video valuable. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see everyone on the next one.